Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here is yet another tutorial on creating an advanced chess engine. And in this tutorial we're going to continue on our topic of bitboards except instead of just discussing bitboards as we've done in the past, we're going to actually start creating the bitboards. <clears throat> so, a couple things to remember. Uh, before we had in our simple chess tutorials, we had stored this as a very simple two-dimensional array. And in these tutorials, we're going to be making them into bit boards. But of course, you can't just have one bit board which represents the entire board. You have to have 12, one which represents each color and piece type. So there's six types of pieces per side, making a total of 12 boards necessary to represent the entire board. So. Let's get started here. I've already put down the code. Be sure to just download it from the comments, uh, from the description below, instead of typing all this stuff out. Uh, so what we're going to do is a little bit different than you might expect. First of all, let me just show you this line right here. Here's where we initiate all of our uh, bit boards. <clears throat> there are 12 there I've done, and I've just simply titled them WP, which stands for white pawn, white knight, white bishop, white rook, white queen, white king, black pawn, black knight, black bishop, black rook, black queen, black king. And I've set them all to 0L. Now, some of you might be wondering what this L means, and don't worry about it. Uh, it's uh, useful especially for the larger numbers and setting uh, bit boards, but uh, it's it shouldn't concern us in these tutorials. You can use a lowercase l as well, but it looks awfully like a 1. So I always use a capital L. But just as a general rule of thumb, I prefer to have 0L. Um, it's just a little uh, more secure. All right. So uh, that's how you do it. Also, notice the type is long. That makes it 64 bits. If you had int, it would be only 32 bits. So long is important. Otherwise, only half our board will be represented and you're going to have errors galore. All right, so what we're going to do is a little different. Obviously, when we first initiate them, we make them all zeros. They are just basically saying every board is empty of pieces. There are no white pawns or white knights or white bishops or anything in any of these boards. So what we're going to do is you'd normally think, well, we need some fancy long number, you know, something like that, and maybe a, a negative one for the knight or something like this. And that would be our fancy board. And remember, the number doesn't really matter what it is, if it's 4 or 1,048. All it, that really matters is where are the bits be, that are represented by that number. So the number could change from 0 to 158 and you have no idea, but it's just because certain bits had changed in it. We don't really care what the actual number it represents is. So, um, what we're going to do is a little bit different than that. We could just come up mathematically with an exact number, you know, saying, oh, this is exactly what a white pawn is for the start of a chess game and then modify it from there on. But for debugging purposes, what if we decided to all of a sudden throw a rook right here in this uh, array view of the board and see what the engine would do with that rook? Well, that would be very tricky if we just dealt with, dealt with numbers because then we'd have to do the math all over again and try to figure out how to add that little rook right there and mistakes are far more prone. It's far easier and less mistakes are made for the human if we can start off the game or tell a computer how to start off the game by describing an array. So what we're doing is we're going to do that. We're going to make an array and get the computer to convert that in automatically into bit boards. And these bits these arrays are just like the previous one with one modification. Lowercase, of course, is black. Uppercase is white. Um, R stands for rook. B stands for bishop. It's all straightforward, except we now, instead of representing the knight as a K, 
it is now represented as an N because that's how it sounds, not how it's spelled. That should make it a little less confusing for some people. And of course, that frees up the K, which we can use for king, which really makes a lot of sense. So it's just a, a good move, I think, in general for the clarity of this, these tutorial series. All right, uh, so we have to figure out a way to convert this. And what we're going to do is basically come up with a string. I'll just explain this here in the comments. We'll come up with a string. Let's say this is 64 zeros. It's not really. I'm not counting. But let's say. And then let's say we're working on uh, the white or the black rooks. We would set the first one to a 1 because there's a rook in the first spot. And then there's 6 empty spots squares and then a 1. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'd skip 6 of them. And the 7th one would be a 1. And the rest would all be zeros, up to 64, wherever that is. And then we will we'll do this in a string format. So we'll just tack on 1s and zeros as characters in, in a string. And then what we'll do is we'll have a method which will convert the string into, I should make this a comment, uh, convert the string into uh, binary, which will take this and maybe convert it into 129 or whatever that works out to, something like that. But in binary, it will be 129 if that's the actual number would be represented by one zero 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 one zero zero all over. All right, that sort of thing. So it's a two-step process. First turning it into a big binary string and then turning the actual string and shoving it into a long. So what we do is we have this method, array to bit boards. And what we do is we send this chessboard, which is right here, this array, and we send all of our bit boards to it. So we pass them on, and we come to this array to bit boards method, and here's how it works. It takes a string, like I had said, binary, and then for each of the squares, it sets binary to zero, all zeros, then it places a one at whichever location i is at, from 0 to 64, starting at the right-hand side and moving left, which is the right-hand side in binary would be the least significant digit. So this would be the 1s, the 2s, the 4s, the 8s, 16s, 32s, 64s, 128s, and so on. Then we have this All right. So first of all, let's set this to a 1, and then it looks at the board and says, hey, maybe that's a, a capital, uh, a white pawn. So that would be a capital P. Then what it would do is take the white pawn board and it would add the conversion. So white pawn is, so basically it adds this binary, this one right here. And then if it found a one here and it happened to be a pawn, a white pawn, it would add that to the white pawn. So this convert to string to bit board, uh, whoops, takes the binary string right here, which represents that one letter. So for instance, uh, let's go through this a little better maybe. Let's say I happen to be on this square here, this uh, white knight that I've highlighted, or white king, sorry, that I've highlighted. What it does is it'll put a 1 at the appropriate location, roughly here or something. It'll place a 1 right there, which represents that only that one king. And then it'll say, oh, okay, now let's go to the capital K. And it'll place that 1 into, uh, take that string, turn it into a number, and place it into the bit board. So how does this whole convert thing work? Well, here's how it is. It first has an if statement. If binary.charat0 zero is 0. So basically, if the leftmost character is a 0, 
what that means is the number is positive if it's a zero. If it's a one, that means the number is a negative. That's just how two signed integers work, as I've explained in the previous video. So this means it will not be a negative number. Then we can Java has an automatic method of turning a string into binary. And the reason this two is here is because binary, uh, you can think of it, it's, it's base two. It works in multiples of two. If you think about uh, computer numbers, it's 2, 4, 16, 32. You hear about these sort of sizes, right? Uh, 1,024, all those sorts of numbers. And that's because they're all multiples of two. All right. And if it's a negative, it's a little bit different. It places a 1 at the beginning and then has a binary of the rest times 2. And this is basically, I've sort of already explained how 2's uh, uh, complements numbers work. And that basically turns it into uh, the appropriate integer, uh, or long, I should say. And so when we do this, we come up with the number of just that single piece. So let's say we are we just found this pond. Now it's ready. Now it's going to add this pawn to all to the board. Let's say the board was already, you know, all these ones and a zero, and we just found out this last one. When you add, what it does is it just says it just adds on top. So if this was a uh, zero, for instance then this one would stay zero. That's sort of how the adding works. There's sort of my mathematical equation here. Right there. So that's how adding on bits work. Obviously the number will could be anything but bitwise it'll look exactly like that. If that would, if those were the two things being added. All right, so basically what it has done is it goes through each one of these and figures out which board it should be sent to, and it converts, it creates a string for, that represents that one piece. It takes that string, converts it into a number, a long, and it adds it to the bit board. And now you have, and once this big loop is done, going through all 64, uh, you have all 12 bit boards. Now this uh, is a fairly efficient way of going about this. However, we don't need to worry about efficiency at this part of the chess engine because initializing the board should only happen at the beginning of the game, so uh, search and stuff is not affected by any of this. Search will modify the board but never reset it. So. Uh, then what I've added here, just to verify, because let's say we ran the program. I'll just run it right now. And by the way, I've added in user interface, since it is my main Java class, I have added a little uh, board generation dot initiate standard chess, just to run this whole class here. If I were to run it, you wouldn't know if it works. It just says it was build was successful. Can't tell. So I've added a draw a array, which takes all the bit boards and converts them back to array. So it's sort of undoing what we've done. But if we come up with the exact same array as we had started with, we know we've done everything right. So basically what it does is it takes, makes a new array, sets them all to an empty space, and then it goes through each one and says, by this statement right here, wherever, basically wherever uh, ones are found in the binary, place, if it's in, one is found in the white pawn binary, place a capital P there in the array. And I will be explaining exactly how this whole statement and others like it work when we deal with uh, bitwise operations. So let's run it with uh, this uh, draw array statement right after we've created all the 
uh, bit boards and see what happens. And you'll notice it looks exactly right. If I were to add, let's say, now a second uh, or another rook right here and run it, the board has now, all the bit boards have been adapted and there is a rook here. Uh, another reason that this is especially beneficial to let the computer automate the conversion is so that if you have something like we will be focusing a little bit on uh, Chess 960, if you're not familiar with that, just look it up on Wikipedia or some other site. And since Chess 960 starts in different positions and there's 960 positions it could start in, we don't want to come up with all the bit boards that could for 960 games. That's just way too much work. So we want to just come up with a method that can randomize uh, the board in a way that we can visualize it and think of it a lot easier and then let the conversion process happen. So for debugging reasons and for things like Chess 960, this is a very helpful way of converting. So it's all outlined right here. It should hopefully make sense to you guys. All right, I hope that you have learned something. Until next time, enjoy Java.